Hi, my name is uh, David Lee. I'm the community manager for Ben Studios for Days Gone. <gasps> Came up, I mean, yeah, so we, uh, back in 2016, of E3, we announced our game initially, and uh, then you saw Deacon fighting against 500 creatures at the Lumber Mill. When you look at that gameplay demo and you look at what we've shown off uh, today, the game has changed dramatically, you know, visually, you know, optimization wise, you know, especially with the UI. I feel like PlayStation has been able to give us the time and the budget to be able to create such a wonderful experience, and I hope the result that we come out with people will enjoy and love to play. So freakers are, are, they are very kind of animalistic, you know, they are very violent, very ruthless. When freakers think, it's all, the only thing they're thinking about is food, like what can I eat? And fortunately for you, the biggest thing they want to eat is you, so uh, at that point you always want to make sure you take them out. Yeah, so the four, they actually like kind of migrate together. So when you're in the open map and when you start playing the game, you'll notice that there's these four nets. And the horde will always be in three different areas. Either they're sleeping, they're, or they're migrating to where they're drinking, or they're migrating to where they want to eat something. So depending on the day and time, you always want to be aware of where the horde is, because you could just be driving your bike and realize you'll bump into like a horde of 300, and you'll probably kind of escape. So. The clear freaker nest, you, the easiest and most effective is a all top. But at that point, they're. You know, there might be other weapons that allow you to do it, but really, fire is the key to clearing uh, prisoners. Necessarily, they don't have like less HP or anything when it's like sunny, but it's just they're, during the nighttime and especially during the snow, they, it just makes them more aggressive and more like kind of feral and a lot of and more violent. So. Yeah. Yeah, you, and you want those ears to collect because uh, they're actually currency you set multiple accounts. So, uh, four ears are very important in this world of time. <laughs> I don't believe so, but I'll take that feedback to the office. The Rippers, they essentially they have their areas that are well known to everyone because the second you see a Ripper, either you're going to die or you're going to barely escape. So, right now within the game, you know, there are these set locations to where these camps are, where the rippers are, things like that. So you just have, once you're aware of them, you'll know where they are. Play the story and you'll see. <laughs>the version we have now, you don't have too many of those decisions in the main storyline to take, but uh, you know, as you're riding the open road, you will, there's a chance you will see survivors, you will see these scenarios where you have the chance to think, okay, am I going to use my resources, am I going to take the risk to save these survivors, will they supply me something good or will they just have nothing, so the, the, it is that player choice that we're going to give you guys to make those decisions with the kind of moment to moment gameplay. It does not affect the main storyline. The main storyline is kind of set, and that's kind of the story our creative director wanted to tell. But really, it's on the onus of the player to whether they decide whether they want to be a good person or kind of an asshole. I think the main story kind of will give that information to you. We have announced DLC, but we haven't really announced what that DLC is yet. So I keep an eye out for that. But with the main story, yeah, that should be sufficient enough to tell you the characters' uh, backstories and make you care about them and want to learn Yeah, so uh, actually once you grab a supply, we have a day and night cycle, so uh, I believe when the day passes, some of those materials will re respawn again, but if they're more rare items, you have to wait for them. Not really. So right now, uh, we can say that the difficulty only affects how much damage you receive and how much damage you take. You know, we have the melee, ranged combat, and survival. So if you're more out there trying to scavenge supplies and things like that, you want to go into survival because it's to make things easy for you and you actually get more of those items. For ranged combat skills, you know, it makes uh, you be able to kind of have more ammo capacity, use focus mode, and make things a little bit easier uh, in ranged combat skill-wise. For, for melee, you want to uh, essentially get your stronger melee weapons, actually increase the damage of your boot knife, which you will always have in the brain. So you always want to balance your skill points and kind of find that perfect space between all three. Yeah, 
Yeah, so that's the way it's supposed to be, but under the melee skill tree, you can actually put a skill into being able to repair certain weapons. So at that point, if you find this, like, fire axes are great in our game, they usually two-shot most enemies, but they break really easily. So once you get that skill in, you can use scrap to consistently keep that we uh, weapon yours, so you can always use it. So yeah, we give you that option uh, if you put the skill points into it. You can, using your bike to hit you know, animals or to hit creatures, it's very viable because it's usually one shot kill. Uh, not through the skill tree, but through Copeland's camp or through the camp, you can uh, get a better frame, you can add more durability to your bike, so you can make your bike kind of like a ramming machine a little bit if you want. Yeah, you'll still receive damage, but you can significantly reduce the damage you get on your bike if you upgrade it to the necessary parts. Yeah, the features I would definitely say is you can drop 20 people into the same location and they can all drive in different directions or maybe go in the same direction, but they'll all have a different experience thanks to our dynamic weather system, thanks to the ambient events we have in our game. So everyone will experience something different, they'll all have a different story. And that part I really appreciate. The replayability of our game is, is really good. Uh, at least with the days gone the way we have now, we just wanted to build this really compelling story that's really emergent world. Multiplayer stuff, we don't have anything planned, uh, but you know, at least me being like the community manager, I'll definitely look out for that feedback and like thousands of people are asking for it. Well, I haven't tried the maximum. I've done up to like 10 plus. If you stay back and you position yourself, yeah, I've been able to mark them all. There is actually a skill under the survival thing where you, it outlines enemies for you. So if you use the uh, true survival sense, there's a chance you can kind of see them off in the distance to see, okay, that's where the food goes. And if you want, you can use rocks or like an attractor to lure them over so that they maybe they'll start attacking the humans and vice versa. Yeah, Days Gone launches on April 26th. We hope to see you uh, there on launch day. Thank you. Hey guys, if you like our content, do like and follow our page. Also, select see first to get the latest game news and updates. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and select on the notify button to get notified to our latest gameplay trailers. Don't miss out!